Hi, I'm Dr. Rosencrantz, one of the scientists in charge at the lab. It's very nice to meet you. Today, you'll be teaming up with scientists in Virginia to evaluate the health of streams and rivers that feed into the Chesapeake Bay. Why is this important? Well, the Chesapeake Bay is home to over 3,600 plant and animal species, many of which are important to humans. For example, people fish for oysters, crabs, and lots of different kinds of fish. It's a place for bird watching, fishing, hunting, and boating. It provides clean drinking water to the 17 million people who live on its shores, and also contains two of the biggest ports on the East Coast. In order for the Chesapeake Bay to continue providing these resources for humans and maintain a good habitat for the plants and animals that live there, we need to protect it from threats like pollution, overfishing, and climate change. To do this, we need you to collect and classify animals and make careful observations at two survey sites. Amber Beach and Nautilus Pier are located on two different rivers with different substrates at each site. A substrate is the material that makes up the riverbed, like sand, rocks, and mud. It's important to know what kind of substrate is at each site because the substrate helps determine what kinds of plants and animals can live there. We'll also need you to check the time of day and the weather when you survey those sites, since these also affect what kinds of plants and animals you collect. Think about it this way. If you tried to count the number of bats you saw at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you probably wouldn't find any and might conclude that bats don't live in that area. However, if you went back to that same area to count bats at 11 o'clock at night, you might see a lot more bats. Let's get down to actually collecting these animals now. You'll be looking for macroinvertebrates, which are animals like crabs, shrimp, insects, worms, and snails. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of time to learn about them later. We don't expect you to name any old macroinvertebrate that you pull out of the stream. We've put together a tool for you to use that will help you identify what you catch. It's called a dichotomous key. We've included instructions on how to use it later. Oh, and one other thing. If you find any blue crabs, and you will, they live in almost every habitat the Chesapeake Bay has to offer, try to figure out whether it's male or female. Okay, it looks like your team is ready to go. You and your team will need to survey both of these sites before you can come back to the lab to test your knowledge. Make sure to take very good notes on what you collect. You get to use these notes later. Good luck!